life ever since then. And I can attest to the stories that I hear up here. A young man from South Philly. I'm from South Philadelphia. And I was part of the problem down there. Real big part of the problem down there. But for the last 35 years, I've been part of the solution. And that's the reason why we brought a couple of young guys with us today. You know, this young man right here has been with us for a couple of years. And now, within a couple of days, he will be off after probation. Having done what he was supposed to have done. And he's a prime example of, when we came in the door, I was saying that, hey, look, you know, I've been here to the studio before. Have you ever been on TV before? No, I ain't been on TV before. Have you ever said anything? I don't know what to say. You said enough. You said that, hey, look, I'm getting off of probation. There's a host. We, we deal with over 300 young people that are active probation, ones that are from 14 to 24 that are uh, the ones that are deemed to be killed or to kill somebody else, ones that say that they won't be alive past 24, 25 years of age. And we're trying to help make a difference in their lives. And, 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 and that's the reason why we're here. We're not just here just to talk about the problem, but we're here to talk about real solutions. We're here to talk about love in the community. We're here to talk about trying to help re-educate our young people and to refocus their mindsets because it's, it's just not a mind thing. We gotta also help change their hearts. We gotta change how families like this family right here is a family that has been sticking together through thick and thin and been working through different situations and stuff. And we gotta help families, you know, re reunite and, and, and reclaim our communities. We can only re re reclaim our communities one community at a time. I, I remember a guy, uh, Bob Sorrell, from um, Ur Urban League. And, and, and he taught me one thing that, that has always stayed with me. He says, how do you eat an elephant? And I sit there looking look, look, like, what? How do you eat an elephant? And, and, and the only way that you can do it is one bite at a time. And basically, the only way that we're going to reclaim our communities is one block at a, one house at a time, one block at a time, one community at a time, and then we can stop some of this senseless violence that's going on here in the city. But we got to reclaim our homes. we got to reclaim our community. And we can't be afraid to do that. Mike Harris, thank you so much. Mike Harris from the Philadelphia Anti-Drug, Anti-Violence Network. Well, we've come to the end of our time, so I want to give everybody the opportunity to just uh, make a final quick statement. Start with you, Pastor Dee. I, I just want to thank you, Lorraine, and um, being on the road. You introduced me to this guy. Being on the road and on the stage with this guy is an experience. I'm safer with Bill Cosby because he'll bust out singing and do some, some Bill Cosby. <laughs> I, I, I feel like preaching when he's on the stage. But we are just experiencing, and I think Terrence will agree with me, because of Power 99 pulling us together. I, mean, I visit 1,600 cities in America, and I'm in front of thousands of people. But to be on the stage with him in some of the hottest, hardest hidden hoods in America and giving our twin dragon message to, 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 to people, uh, it's been embraced. And I want to thank Power 99 for that. I want to say to your audience, uh, it's been done before. When I was a kid, I couldn't play basketball. I was skinny, slim in the waist, cute in the face, but couldn't fight or switch hands. And they didn't let me, they didn't let me on the court. So I picked up a gun because I wanted to be relevant in the hood. And they had these commercials about this cat with this afro blowing in the wind. That commercial went, uh, uh, he fly through the air with the greatest of ease like the band on Flying Pat Fees. Dr. J, Dr. J, where'd you get those moves? And I wanted to be him, but I couldn't play. Several years later, I saw a chocolate dark brother named Michael Jordan leave the top of the key and dunk the ball. Turned around backwards, licked his tongue, waved to the camera, switched hands, and dunked the ball backwards. When I grew up, nobody could do that but Dr. J. Here's the thing, that same year, 80,000 teenagers in high schools left the top of the key and dunked the ball. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out what changed. Nothing about their anatomy. They knew one thing. It's been done before. And I'm here to tell somebody, it's been done before. Somebody that's been in jail for 15 years got out. Somebody got a good wife, two beautiful kids, a two-car garage. I ain't got no dog named Spot. I don't do dogs. But I got a nice house and a wonderful church. Somebody is nonviolent and a great American. It's been done before. It's your turn. Thanks, man. All right. Terrence? Let me say uh, thanks to Lorraine, to Power 9 to Clear Channel for giving me this platform, for introducing me once again to uh, Pastor D. And I'm so 
thankful to be on a panel with all these people right now because I just want to I want to let everybody know that I'm set out to do a mission and I'm not going to be stopped. I mean, I, I want to thank all the people who've been supporting the familiar faces against mass incarceration uh, page that we that we're building up because that's about building people, bringing us together. So once we get enough of us, we're going to do some things to make some change because all of this allowing these people to just come into our neighborhoods and arrest us and send us to these places that are far away where so other people can make money off of us, it's got to stop. But the thing about it, we have to stop making it easy for them. We got to stop making it easy for them because right now we're just making it too easy for them to do it by us being involved in all of this, killing each other because we're not killing nobody from nowhere else, from no other neighbors, we're killing each other. I wrote this book, Guilty by Reason of Arrest, for one reason to have a platform to be able to speak about all of the things that are going on, not just the prison, but the violence itself. And like I said, I want to thank everybody who's been giving me their support. I want to thank all the people, the schools that we go speak at. They embraced us. I mean, they invite us back and feel free to pass the D myself. And I always bring a, um, a few radio personalities and other rappers and singers.